This is a relay that I built in order to help students understand how relays work and to be able to figure out what are some good diagnostic strategies. When I have a relay that's not working or a circuit that has a relay in it that's not working, how do I determine what the problem is? And so we're going to take this relay and we're going to look at some different scenarios where the relay is not functioning correctly and what kind of strategies we can use to be able to fix it. We use a relay in a car to be able to take a small amount of current from a control device like an ignition switch to control a large amount of current like a starter solenoid. And so we can take that small amount of current when we press the, the ignition button. We can have a really small wire that goes out to the, the relay coil side. And then there can be a rather large wire that needs to carry the large amount of current out to the starter solenoid. So let's take a look at some of those strategies. This is the circuit that we're going to be learning about to help us better understand how a relay works. I have the relay divided in half by colors. And so this blue side right here, this is indicating that this is the load in the circuit. So anywhere that I have a blue node like this, that's an indication of a load. So these are loads right here, right? This is the thing that's going to use or convert the electrical energy into some, something that's functional. The red devices are the switches in the, re in the circuit. So these are control devices. So we're controlling something on this side, right? In this case, we're turning this switch on when the relay is activated. It's very similar to a switch that's like this switch right here, this latching switch. When we number a relay, when we look at the pins, there's a standard for talking about what each of the coils are. And so most of the time you're gonna see this one labeled as 85 and 86. I wouldn't get too caught up on which one is 85 and which one is 86. Just that 85 and 86 are the coil side of the relay. The other two numbers that we'll see on a four pin relay is we'll see one labeled 30. And this one down here will be labeled 87. Once again, not super critical that you know that sometimes this might actually be 87 and this one might be 30, but the 30 and 87 are the switch side of the relay. So our control side of the relay, side with the coil, I'm just gonna kind of highlight the components that are associated with that. So if we, if we look in this kind of area, these are the components associated with the coil. The position of the coil and that actually turning the coil on, the rest of the circuit doesn't necessarily matter to this individual circuit. So we're going to treat it kind of as its own thing. So here we have, this is the coil side of the circuit. So let's see what happens when we turn the circuit on. So when I press this button, I see that the coil is now on. Now most uh, relays are not going to have an LED like this one but we should hear an audible click when the relay turns on. So when I click that, this actually closes. And most of the time you can't see into a relay. This specific one is just for training purposes. They do make relays like this that would go on like a control board or something like that. Okay, so the relay is getting power. If we follow battery positive, battery positive comes here to pin 85. And then ground is controlled by this switch. So when I turn on the ground, I am turning on this coil. We take our multimeter and we're going to put it in volts DC and I make a measurement. We should see, just like at any load in a circuit, this should drop most of our source voltage. So we're dropping about 11 volts at the coil and that's as expected. This is where the energy is being converted into this magnet magnetic field that is closing the switch. So this is me. We're just diagnosing the coil side of, of the relay. Okay. So that's functioning correctly. And then the switch side of the relay, we're going to keep going in this direction. So that wire is part of the switch. And then we go all the way back here to ground. But the thing that's not in these things up here, this is not part of the switch side of the relay. It's part of the coil side of the relay. So we're going to treat this and this independently. So now we're working here on the switch side. Okay, on the switch side, what happens is the coil, this black line represents the, the magnetism that occurs. The, when we pass current through a conductor, we create a magnetic field. That magnetic field is going to pull this switch to the closed position. It's going to do it through magnetism, just like physically pressing this switch closes this. So the whole purpose of the coil is just to close the switch. When the switch goes into the closed position, we should then have 
very little voltage that's dropping right here at the circuit, right? This is a, a switch and it should have very little resistance. So if I were to perform a voltage drop test on this side, I should see very little voltage dropping. Remember that the voltage drops in the circuit wherever the resistance is the highest. So there's not very much resistance in this circuit as we can see by this voltage drop test. Where we should see voltage drop occurring in this circuit is right here at the LEDs. And so we see that we're dropping 11 volts right here and the same right here. And that's because this is a parallel circuit. And I've got some videos that talk about parallel circuits and why that's occurring. So for testing purposes, when we're trying to diagnose why is this relay working or why is it not working, we should be performing voltage drop tests on the load. If the load is not uh, dropping correctly, then we're going to look at the ground side and look at the power side. So if you haven't seen this, this type of circuit before, I created this circuit to be able to help students understand how to correctly diagnose electrical problems. And so any of these nodes except the fuse, I can set a fault in, including the relay. So there, I'm not going to show you how to set the fault, but it's real quick, an easy way to set a fault in here. And then that fault can be utilized to be able to quickly test your, your knowledge uh, and experience in diagnosing. So I'm going to pause the video right here. I'm going to set a fault, and then we'll come back and see if we can figure out where the fault is in the circuit. Okay, so now there's a fault set in this circuit. Uh, the relay is not functioning correctly, so I'm going to come to this switch verify the problem and we see that nothing's happening. We're not really looking. I mean, on this model, you could see the light illuminating, but for a relay, we're just listening for that, that click sound. There's no click occurring. So what that tells me is I don't need to spend any time here in this, on the switch side of the circuit yet. I'm not functioning on the coil side of the circuit. So it's either the coil, this splice right, the fuse, the latching switch, or the wire battery or splice, splice left. Okay, so I'm gonna do my very first test on the load. And so what we should expect before we make a measurement, we should always think about what should this be? This should be source voltage. We do a voltage drop test and it is not source voltage. Now we can do a voltage drop test on everything else. I've addressed this in other videos. Most of the time it's easiest to check at the ground side of the circuit. And so I'm gonna put my red meter lead right here and my black lead, meter lead right here. But you could have just as well started on the positive side of the circuit. So between this position, this wire, this latching switch, splice left, and the negative terminal of the battery, there should be very little resistance, right? The resistance should be at the coil in the circuit. So somewhere between here and here, I have high resistance in the circuit. And so now I can individually test components. So I might test right here. And we can see that is where the voltage is dropping. Let's just do a quick verification on the switch. So not very much voltage drop there and not very much voltage drop here. So we've figured out that this is where the problem is in the circuit. Okay, so we're dropping that 11 volts and we should not be dropping voltage there. This is a wire. It should have very little resistance. So I'm going to take that fault out and we'll practice with another one. Just put this back in just to make sure we see that the circuit is actually functional. Okay, so our circuit's back to where we want it to be. Okay, now I'll pause the video and we will uh, set a new fault. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and test the circuit. So we hear that audible click indicating that now our coil side of the circuit appears to be functioning correctly. We probably don't need to do any testing on this side of the circuit. We can concentrate right here on the switch side of the circuit. Okay, so I like to always start at the load. However, with the relay, I'll put on the screen, there's something called a relay buddy. Um, lots of different manufacturers make a tool, but it allows me to be able to remove the relay from the car and put in this relay and do some testing directly at the relay. So it might be beneficial to test directly at the relay. So I could do a voltage drop here. And once again, remember, we, we expect that there should be very little resistance. There should not be a high voltage drop between this point here and this point right here. So that's actually what it's supposed to be, something like this. It's right exactly at zero, so that might be an indication of something. But we're not dropping the voltage here. So the switch is actually, we're not having a problem with the switch at the moment. So then I want to test the ground side of the circuit. I could also come out to these loads, and if I did a voltage drop test on these loads, we're seeing that 
there is a small amount, and these are LEDs, so, but these should be dropping all of the voltage. So some problem is either on the ground side, so from here back to the battery negative, or on the positive side, if I go this direction. Now, probably there's not a problem right here. There could be a problem in this part of the circuit where we have this splice, but the coil turns on, so we know that we have battery positive at this point in the circuit. So let's test the ground. So I'm going to put my red meter lead closest to the battery positive, and my black meter lead I'm going to put all the way over here on ground. And so we're seeing a little bit of a voltage drop there on the ground side. This should be dropping all of my voltage because of this LED is in, is in the load. I could also test it right there after the load and see that that's where I have a problem. I like doing this test because this is it's pretty easy to access the relay depending on where this load is. It could be tricky to get to. Okay, so it's not on the ground side. Let's check the power side. So once again, I could test this whole section right here. So let's test that just to see. And we know that that whole section is close to battery voltage. So that's where the problem is. And we suspect it's probably not these two. Now it's easy to get to it on this uh, training board, but on a vehicle, it could be challenging to get to these individual test points. So I might break it down and check right here at the fuse. So I'd be checking at this post right here and saying, okay, is it after the fuse and so on. But if I test just this wire right here, we can see that that's pretty close to the source voltage of the battery, indicating that I've got an open or high resistance in this wire right here. Okay, fix that and do one more. And just for training purposes, that took about 10 seconds to be able to fix. So I, uh, I kept everything running live just so you could see how quickly you can set faults and take faults away. So if I press on my switch now, I should see the correct illumination of the LEDs. So I'm turning off the camera simply because I don't want you to know about the fault prior to. All right, one last test. Okay, here we go. We try to turn that on and we don't hear an audible click from the coil side. So that leads us to believe that we need to stay kind of concentrated in this blue area right here. First things first, let's check the coil itself. So I'm going to go red to the most positive and black to the most negative. And we see here we are getting a voltage drop right there. But when I, when I select the latching switch, I don't see any action in the coil. So if I have voltage drop where I expect to have voltage drop, but the thing, the load is not doing what I expect it to do, in this case, creating an electromagnet, in the case of a, a light turning on. This is a direct indication that, hey, the coil itself in the relay, this is faulty. So I try to turn it on and nothing happens. So the coil itself has been set as a fault. Okay, so hopefully this helps clear up how a relay works for you. I think it's really good way to be able to break it down into the coil side as a diagnostics and look at the switch side and diagnose it separately. So hopefully this has been helpful in letting you know that a relay, while it has some complexity to it, uh, when we break it down, it just makes it a lot easier to be able to correctly diagnose. All right, good luck out there.